Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people, where you'll hear stories about people who think the world revolves around them and that nobody else matters. Seriously, guys, the stories today are absolutely bonkers. So I hope you enjoy the lineup today and do remember to hit that subscribe button for future tales. Okay, so my daughter turns 11 in six weeks. She's been begging for a Nintendo Switch. Due to poor grades and overall bad attitude, we decided to not get a Switch for her. Now, money isn't the issue, it's her behavior. My daughter acts very entitled, and she lies left and right. I just don't feel like now is the right time for a Switch. So on Easter, my husband, our kids, and myself are at my husband's aunt's house. They have two adult children, one of whom is mentally delayed. She functions at about a 10-year-old level, but she's in her 40s. She lives in an assisted living apartment, and she has a job where she gets paid 5 bucks a week. So she doesn't get many upscale things unless they're a gift. Well, the cousin had an old Game Boy that she saved up to buy, and she was playing while we were there. She eventually set it down, and she moved on to playing a board game with us while the kids ran around playing. Well, this is where it goes to hell in a handbag. My daughter decided to be an epic turd, and she took the Game Boy. She snuck it out of the house by asking if she could go to the car to look for a book she'd brought, and then she stashed it in the glove compartment. She then proceeded to hide the fact that she had the Game Boy for several days, even after being asked where she last saw it when Uncle called and asked if we'd seen where Cousin might have left it. Now, due to Cousin's challenges, she was utterly distraught over her missing Game Boy. It's one of the few forms of entertainment she has, and she worked really hard to have it. I'm disappointed about the thievery, but I'm even more upset about my kid's entitled attitude about being caught. I only found out because her sisters ratted her out. Even then, she absolutely refused to tell me the truth, and she tried to pin it on her sister saying that they forced her to take it. It wasn't until I sat there and thought about it that I knew she was lying to me. Once I told her I knew it had to be her because of XYZ, she finally did confess. Her behavior only got worse from there. She refused to apologize when uncle and cousin came by to get the Game Boy, and she had the gall to act like she was the one being wronged. Now, I feel like I need to drop the hammer on her and send the message home that stealing is not okay. I think that purchasing the Switch for her birthday and then having her give it to cousin might be a good way to deliver the message, while at the same time giving cousin a nice upgrade to make amends. Now, I did mention this to a friend, and they said this would be a terrible move because... Birthday. I don't think that really matters, but the comment was enough to make me question myself. What do you think? Also, I do intend on giving my kiddo the opportunity to earn a Switch down the line, but just not in such close proximity to this incident. I'm not sure how or when, since I do have a significant other to consult, but the opportunity will be provided in some way. Now guys, I personally think that getting the daughter something she really, really wants on her birthday, and then forcing her to give it up is such a terrible way to go about it. Especially to an 11 year old. Like yeah, what she did was wrong, but a lot of people do seem to think that having a birthday party with no gifts would be a better punishment than giving her the most wanted thing ever and then forcing her to give it away. So last fall, we moved into a new house, and less than two weeks later, we had a baby. We were pretty focused on the whole parenting thing, and we failed to notice how often the neighbor on one side was using our property for several things, without any kind of permission or discussion. Now, it began when his kids spent their days on our driveway, drawing with sidewalk chalk. We had to ask them to stop because we seriously feared running them over when backing out of the garage, as they have absolutely no supervision or regard for cars. They then stopped drawing, and then they started using our garage door as a bumper stop while riding their scooters and bikes. They physically bashed into my garage door and they dented it. I asked them to stop, and after a dozen or so instances, they finally stopped. In the spring, we noticed the dad was parking his trailer on our side of the property between our two driveways. The property line is very clear, with fences and different types of landscaping. In addition, he was pulling his garbage cans through our gravel and making huge tracks. So, as we're in the middle of a pandemic and we have a baby, we decided to write a note and leave it with our information, while also lining the property line with huge rocks. We never did hear from them, but they had moved the rocks into a pile and put them on the front of our property. We then moved the rocks back again and thought we had made our position very clear. At the beginning of June, the dad comes and rings our doorbell. He proceeded to tell us that he's parked his trailer like that since he's moved in, and no one has cared before, and we can't care either. At no point did he ask if he could park on our side of the property or use our property. He said to me, it's never been a problem and I should be able to do it. We then politely said that we did not give him permission to do so and explained that we intended to landscape the area and his trailer and use of our property would ruin the landscaping that we planned. 
The entire conversation was so difficult because he spoke over me the entire time and he talked to me like a child. At the end of the confrontation, he said that we were rude neighbors and stormed off. Since then, he parks even further onto our side. He moves our landscaping rocks constantly and he aggressively moves his garbage cans through our gravel, leaving marks like he was zigzagging back and forth. So this weekend, I started taking photos as proof of his parking and the way he's ruined our gravel with his garbage cans. He then came out and glared at me and I very nicely again asked him to stop. He replied, why? And when I said it's because it's my property and we've asked him not to, he replied, whatever, and walked away. Now we come to today, and I'm done. I'm so frustrated that this guy feels like he's entitled to unquestioned use of property that's not his. I drafted a cease and desist letter with some legal assistance. Prior to sending it, I wanted to ensure that I had proper cameras in the event that he decided to make things worse. When I installed the camera, the neighbor must have realized why it was installed because they stopped doing all the annoying stuff. Then about a month later, they listed their house for sale. They moved out, and we don't have to deal with their entitled attitude anymore. How entitled do you have to be to literally put your house up for sale and move away because you were told to stop using someone else's property? Like, wow. I do, however, feel bad for the new neighbors he's going to have, though. Like, living beside an entitled neighbor that has no respect for boundaries and personal property is the worst. And I seriously don't know how OP put up with that neighbor for as long as he did. Okay, so this story happened years ago, but I still remember it because I still can't understand my mom's logic behind it. My mom has always been a super entitled brat and the golden child of her family. Anyways, my birthday party rolls around and it was time to open presents. Me, being my anti-social self, just wanted to get this party over with and to be left alone. I opened presents from my favorite auntie. She had gotten me some books on witchcraft history and on the occult because she knew I was really into learning about that kind of stuff back then. I then got the normal presents, I suppose, from my uncles and aunties, and also 20 bucks here and there. Once I was done with what was on the table, I said thank you to every single person. I was trying to escape back to the garage with my dad when I was stopped by my mom as I went to leave, saying that I didn't open the presents from her yet. I sigh, thinking she's bought me another really girly thing to wear. Now, I want to note that she hates the way I dress because I normally wear a lot of black, and I still do actually. So I sit down on the couch and she hands me three boxes. One small box and two medium boxes. I unwrap the small one first and lo and behold, she gets me a bottle of her favorite perfume. I then look at her like, what the F mom? And she says, oh, if you don't like it, I'll just keep it. I then unwrap the second present. It's new Nikes that are too big for me, but oh wait, wouldn't you know it? They're my mother's size. I then sigh and hand them over to her without a word. She then starts loudly saying, I've been meaning to get new gym shoes, to the whole room. So at this, my best friend looks at me and she just rolls her eyes because she knows how my mother is. I then open the last present, and this one was actually really nice. It was a brand new Discman, and yes, I'm really old. It was really nice. It had a strap for your hand to slide in so you can walk with it comfortably. I said, cool, thanks mom. And at this, my mom looks annoyed. I start to walk away with my Discman in hand and she gets up and tells me, Oh, I bought that for you so we can both use it. I'm gonna need it for the gym later, so can you put that in my room? I told her, I'm sorry mom, but I already gave you back your things, but this is mine. Thank you for buying yourself presents and pretending they're for me. I then walk to the garage with my friend laughing quietly. I tell my dad all about my mom's attempt at presents and he just sighs and hands me a beer. My mom then comes outside yelling at me how I could embarrass her like that in front of her friends. She just stomps her foot and then looks at my dad for help. And dad says, So you bought yourself presents for her 16th birthday. Did you think she would be happy about that? She has a right to be upset and you don't really have a leg to stand on here. My mom just huffed and she stomped back in the house. And I spent the rest of the party with my dad and my friend in the garage. At least OP got to keep the discman, right? The mom just sounds over the top ridiculous though. Yeah, let's just buy things that I want for my daughter's birthday. So OP did come into the comments and say that her parents were divorced and at the time she was living with dad. And I can see why. It seems like he's the cooler parent in this one. So a little bit of backstory. My friend and I are extremely close and we always go shopping when we can. It was after finals at school, and everybody else had plans, so we went to our town center by the school to eat lunch and shop because teenage boredom. We went to the normal kinds of clothes shops, such as H&M, Dillard's, Macy's, etc., to look and try out clothes that we picked out for each other. We were walking around, and she saw something she liked in some clothing store that we've never been to, so we went in and started looking at stuff. 
That's when she noticed the bra section and she starts looking through it, seeing if she could find something that fits. While we were looking around, a girl and her mom walks in. Nothing special about them, so we paid them no mind. We kept looking around, and we kinda split up when the mother taps me on the shoulder, and she gives me the, come over here so we can talk in private wave. She then says to me, excuse me, is that your girlfriend? I told her, no no, we're just really good friends, is there something wrong? Karen then gestures to her daughter and says, well, you see, she's making my daughter feel very self-conscious. I then said, oh, did we say something inappropriate? I'm so sorry if we did, we'll make sure to watch what we're saying. At this, Karen says, no, no, it's nothing like that. It's just, she's so big there. It's making my daughter think that she needs a boob job like her. Now I'm thinking, excuse me? At this point, I'm already getting kind of mad since she assumed my friend got a boob job at the age of 17. But I let it slide since people do sometimes get the wrong impression. Karen then goes on and says, I was just wondering if you guys could leave so my daughter could shop in peace. I tell her, okay, hold on. You want me and my friend to leave because my friend's chest is big? Are you serious? Karen then says, It's not that big of a deal. This store is not meant for people like her anyway. She needs to go to Hot Topic or something. Now, I'm basically about to lose it on this woman. I can handle a misjudged insult, but when you insult an entire person, that's when I get angry. So I tell the Karen, as far as we're concerned, this place is open to the public and we're allowed to shop here if we want. If your daughter can't deal with looking at my friend's figure, you need to reassure her that she's beautiful in her own way and to not worry about stuff like that. Not basically back her up that she should be self-conscious about herself. Now I can then see the Karen getting frustrated at the fact that I'm making good arguments. At this point we're starting to cause a ruckus in the store and the manager comes over and says, is there a problem here? Karen then says, yes, this slut, pointing to my friend, is making my daughter feel so self-conscious about her body and she refuses to leave. At this, the store manager says, ma'am, anyone is allowed to shop in our store, but now you two aren't. I was surprised at how quickly the manager kicked them out, but I wasn't complaining. She was escorted out and she was calling me and my friend insults while on her way out with her daughter not even saying a word. The manager then apologized and told us to take our time. Guys, honestly, I think if anybody was making the daughter feel self-conscious, it's Karen, the mom, 100%. Like, the fact that she even said that to the manager is enough to make her teenage daughter probably want to crawl into a hole and never come out. I mean, can you really blame her? I guess she was just trying to do what's best for her daughter, right? <laughs> I'm studying in the US, but I live in India. I'm flying back to my hometown on a roughly 24-hour journey. So, some backstory. I am the worst kid for an Indian parent. I'm a boy with long hair. I smoke, I drink, I eat non-vegetarian. Also, India has like a hundred languages and I speak three. And lastly, maybe I was smelling like cigarettes and I do try my best to cover up with deodorant and I'm pretty sure I was fine until I met this entitled woman. The airline I was flying with is reputable but they were running a couple of hours late. So there was a general frustration in the crowd of mainly Indians most of whom had a connecting flight, which was supposed to leave an hour once they landed at the stopover. So the airline was trying to rush everything as much as possible. On this day, I was boarding one of those double-decker Airbus A380s, and I had the window seats at the end of the plane. But by the time I reached there, it was already occupied by a Karen, who's about 50 years old. Rough estimate. The Karen basically ordered me to take her aisle seat. Now, I was fine with that because I get to talk and I fly so often that a window seat isn't something that's super exciting. Also, I didn't want to argue with the elderly Indians. By the time I settled, I noticed a very elderly lady beside me, who was trying to convey something which I don't understand. But with signs, I figured out that she was hurt on one hand while she was boarding the plane, so I get the air hostess to get her some medicine and ice. Now, while all this is happening, the Karen has made herself comfortable, and she's taken the middle seat, and she's put the pillow on the headrest, and she's comfortably sleeping across two seats. She was clearly intruding in my space, but once again, taking into account her age, I decided it was best for me to not say anything. So fast forward to when our first meal served. I have the non-vegetarian meal with a whiskey, while Karen's sleeping. Everything's going fine, until it's time for the second meal, and Karen's awake. The air hostess comes with the cart, and she starts asking everybody what they want. The hostess looks at me, and she asked what I want, and immediately, the Karen responds that she'll take the vegetarian meal. The hostess gives me a look implying that she's sorry, and I just smile back. I then ask for the non-vegetarian meal with the whiskey, and all hell breaks loose. Karen says, 
Excuse me, are you serving this underage kid a whiskey? The flight attendant says, Ma'am, he's not underage, and I would ask you to not intrude on his space. Karen says, I'm sorry, but to me, he clearly looks 16. Check his passport, it'll prove you wrong. The woman then grabs my bag that's down by my feet, and she begins to open it. She finds a pack of cigarettes and an e-cigarette, and she pulls them out and starts shouting, saying, Who do you think you are, getting these illegal things when you're underage, and sitting next to me? At this, the flight attendant says, Ma'am, I'm gonna have to ask you to return his belongings and stop disturbing the passengers. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to call the pilot. She then turns to me and she apologizes and she talks about compensation for the trouble. And the woman is losing it. Karen says, Call the pilot. Let him see the vile things going on in this flight. I want this guy kicked off the flight and he does not deserve anything. If anyone deserves anything, it's me. He's destroying my religion. Go get the pilot. It's at this point that the woman then tries to get other passengers to turn against me. Now bear in mind, these passengers have been awoken by her shouting on a 13-hour flight and they're clearly irritated. Karen then says, How are you eating non-vegetarian sitting next to me? I'm a pure vegetarian and you are destroying my religion by doing that. I told her, hey, I'm eating what I like, I'm allowed to, please calm down, I just want to finish my meal. She then tells me, your generation pays no heed to our scriptures. You're eating non-vegetarian, you're drinking, and you have such untidy hair. Referring to my long hair. And I lost it. I said, look lady, I don't care what you think. I've put up with enough of this. First, you intrude my personal space, and then you don't let me enjoy my meal, and now you're commenting on my appearance? If you say one more thing, I will lodge an official complaint with the airline, and you will be on the no-fly list for a while. At this, Karen says, I dare you. My son is a lawyer in New York, and he's gonna file a case and get your visa cancelled, and you can never get into the US again. At this point, the air hostess is now back with the pilot. Karen then looks at the pilot and says, Look, the pilot's here. And then she gives him the whole rundown. How I'm not vegetarian, I smoke, I'm rude, I have long hair, and the list goes on and on. Pilot then says to her, Ma'am, I'm gonna say this once before lodging an official complaint against you with the airline. Please. Leave this man alone. The woman is now visibly shaken. All of her options have closed, and she says, I'm gonna sue this airline. The pilot then says to her, That's for our legal department. I am telling you for the last time, you are not allowed to talk to this man, and if you stir up any more problems, you will be reported. At this point, Karen says nothing. The hostess then asks me to grab my things, and she escorts me to a different section of the plane. I did not get an upgrade, as all the seats were full, but it was still much better. Later, the hostess tells me that the Karen was reported again for kicking the seat of a passenger in front of her. The pilot had lodged an official complaint against her, and there was gonna be police waiting for her as soon as the plane lands. I had to give testimony, but there was no police action against her, but now she's on the no-fly list now. Okay guys, so first, I wanna say that I do have a few friends who are Indian, and they're very strict with no drinking, no smoking, and they're vegetarians, but they would never ever ever freak out because someone's eating a non-vegetarian dish around them, as that's pretty crazy. But hey, who knows, maybe they're part of the youngins who don't take their religion as seriously as this woman does. Like, how the heck did she expect OP to get thrown off a moving flight? <laughs> but that's entitled people though, right? They always demand such outrageous things. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, we survived yet another one. If you guys enjoyed the episode today, do hit that thumbs up. And if you missed yesterday's episode on the channel, I'll link it right here. A Karen stalks OP in a store when they refuse to serve her. It's such a crazy story, and this Karen is absolutely bonkers, guys. So check it out if you haven't. And myself and Steve-O will see you guys in the next one. We love you.